Well, hello everybody. We have a webinar today to mark the 60th anniversary of the International Spinal Cord Society. This will allow us to reflect on the past six decades and discuss some of the major achievements, some of the challenges that remain and future plans and priorities for the coming years. This webinar will discuss the importance of relationship development, partnership and collaboration in helping ISCOS realize its vision to facilitate healthy and inclusive lives for people with spinal cord injury or dysfunction globally. Our participants today are Dr. Havinda Shabra, the immediate past president of ISCOS, Jan Herling, vice president of marketing for Wellspect, and Maria Lundbach, head of corporate marketing also for, uh, for Wellspect. And I'm Ruth Marshall, and I'm the president of ISCOS. It's my honor to start by reflecting on our 60 years. In September, we celebrated the 60th anniversary of ISCOS with a conference, unfortunately virtual, rather than face-to-face -face due to the COVID pandemic. But we had a fantastic meeting. ISCOS has a rich history and legacy since its founding in 1960. And there have been many achievements, but many challenges remain. And we in ISCOS continue to rise to these challenges through our ongoing initiatives and work. So when I look back on the 60 years, I'm often asked what our ma major milestones have been that have helped towards the significant advancements in spinal cord injury management. Of course, the first thing was the founding of the society by Professor Sir Ludwig Gutmann and his group at Stoke Mandeville. By then, we already had the Stoke Mandeville Games that um, became the Paralympics. Over the years, ISCOS has become a much more inclusive society. I recall when I went to my first ISCOS, or as it was called then, IMSOP meeting in Perth in 1988, Perth, Australia, not Scotland, uh, that most of the women there were wives or partners of the men. There were a few nurses and a couple of physiotherapists. But basically, it was a medical society. And the medical people were almost all male. Now, we are a much more inclusive society. And that is very important. We welcome as full members nurses, allied health of all professions, basic researchers, clinical researchers, and consumers who are also active in working in spinal cord injury. This means that we all work together to create improved programs and to 
let our global membership and those who utilize our educational resources in all aspects of spinal cord injury management and support. The things that have helped us in the last 20 years in particular have been the great improvements in technology. The fact that we are able to do a webinar by Zoom from basically five different parts of the world is amazing in itself. The fact that we have been able to develop a fantastic um, set of modules online and free called eLearn SCI to help people learn effectively about the general areas of spinal cord injury and their specific areas. Most recently, we have been developing a new consumer module. And surpri not surprisingly, this is led and developed by consumers. In 1960, there would have been no expectation, and in fact, I suspect not even a welcome for people who had spinal cord injuries to be involved at this level. Although from the start, there were doctors who had sustained spinal cord injuries or polio that had left them paralyzed, who then became spinal cord injury physicians. We have also moved on in the way we do conferences. And we had started doing that, particularly, I think, under Dr. Chabra's leadership um, in, two, in 2010 to have regional meetings. And we have continued with this. And we recognize how important it is to run symposia where the people are. And we do that by having regional symposia. We had a very successful one last year in, uh, in South America and Central America. But we also do it by supporting our associated societies wherever they are. We look at Africa, Southern Africa, and more recently, the Northern part of Africa and the Arab speaking, Arabic speaking world, South America, India and Sri Lanka, uh, Korea, um, throughout uh, Asia, in fact, through the Asian Spinal Cord Network. And by doing so, we take our processes and our education to where it is needed. Over the last couple of years, we have also developed podcasts and this webinar series um, with uh, Dr. Chabra being the original host and as I am now the president taking over that role. We have a collaboration that is ongoing with the WHO. At one stage, it was a very lackluster relationship, but the changes within the WHO and our work have really made a huge difference so that we have a very active involvement now in rehabilitation areas 
and spinal cord injury management, including uh, the, a book supported by the WHO. We have our own book as well, edited, the editor-in-chief was Dr. Chabra, in the, man, uh, the ISCOS book of Management of Spinal Cord Injury, a huge tome. And we are currently working on creating the second edition of eLearn SCI. We have a worldwide Spinal Cord Injury Day. We have networks, networks between um, different professional groups, networks in different regions of the world, special interest groups, and with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, we now run virtual conferences and have our own COVID-19 spinal cord injury data set. It's actually very exciting to be at the forefront of an organization that has really lifted its game to meet the new world that we live in. Because we know that the new normal with COVID and post COVID will not be the old normal. We know that all our future conferences will either be virtual or will be hybrid. This in itself will enable people who cannot afford to come to get on a plane and stay in a hotel in a foreign country to attend the meeting and to access the sessions virtually after the conference is over. So what are my dreams and aspirations for ISCOS as we enter our seventh decade? I miss seeing my friends, except on TV. I would like to be able to go back to having in-person meetings. But my dream and aspiration is that everybody who is involved in looking after people with spinal cord injuries or living with spinal cord injuries, or researching cure, or researching improved outcomes, are able to share our work virtually and in person, and through our journals, Spinal Cord and Spinal Cord Series and Cases. If we can achieve that inclusion and we have our second edition of eLearn SCI and developing and keep on developing new modules as needed so we don't have to wait 10 years before we do another module if something comes up and we have some new ones being developed then we shouldn't have to wait another 10 years before we have a third edition. We, the technology now allows us to move much quicker than before. I hope that in the next 10 years, our consumers, the people who are living with spinal cord injury or dysfunction are enabled to live an even better life. We know that in 
1960, the life expectancy of someone who sustained a complete spinal cord injury anywhere in the world was probably reduced by a factor of 50% of what it would up their life expectancy would otherwise have been if they survived the first two years. Throughout the world, we know that the life expectancy of our patients has improved enormously. But we know that in less resourced settings, it is much more difficult. And we know worldwide that in less resourced settings, for example, people are not getting vaccinated against the coronavirus. So there are lots of things that need to happen that we in the resourced, well-resourced areas of the world can do to ensure that throughout the world, people with spinal cord injuries are able to achieve their goals and that we are able to help them do that and to live their fullest and most active life. And I might add very excitingly, because it is Australia Day today, they announced last night the Australian of the Year. And this year's Australian of the Year is a young man, well, he's 31, uh, by the name of Dylan Alcott. And Dylan has won the Grand Slam, Golden Slam, in wheelchair tennis, quad tennis, having won all the Grand Slams plus Olympic gold medal. And he is currently competing in his last Grand Slam, the Australian Open, as we speak, and is heading into the grand final. But it is very exciting that for the first time ever, somebody in Australia has been recognised at this level. And he is an amazing spokesperson for people with disabilities and highlights their abilities. And he was born with a spinal cord injury. He had a tumour wrapped around his cord and so has had a spinal cord injury since birth. I think that in itself says something about what we can look forward to in the next 10 years. So I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Shabra to talk about the future and our strategic planning review. Thank you, Dr. Ruth Marshall. You have very wonderfully summed up uh, the journey of ISCOS over the last 60 years and how all the members have worked towards the realization of the objectives of ISCOS, which have been in line with its philosophy. I also want to congratulate you on Australia Day today. Uh, and uh, what a wonderful news for persons with disabilities across the globe that the person of the year in Australia is somebody who is on a wheelchair. So there was a growing realization also within ISCOS uh, that uh, though we have done very well, we need to have a roadmap for the future for the next five to 10 years so that we could plan well which way to go and also pool our resources accordingly. So the first thing that was done to prepare a strategic plan was to have a strategic management committee. And together with the executive, the plan and the roles and responsibilities for the committee was set up. The committee would constitute of the past presidents, the executive, the board of ISCOS and all 
the chairs of the special interest groups, the chairs of the committees got covered within the board itself. So once the strategic management committee was constituted, it brainstormed on the plan, how to move forward with the strategic plan. And it was decided to first go in for analysis of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That is a SWOT analysis. And to do that, it was thought that the best way forward would be to do a survey of members. And this was done through a specially compiled questionnaire approved by the Strategic Management Committee. Once the results of the survey were analyzed, the Strategic Management Committee brainstormed on this and then finalized the priorities or the objectives of ISCOS for the next seven years. So there were regular meetings of the Strategic Management Committee to plan the way forward. Once the priorities were finalized, the initiatives for each priority were drafted and then finalized in consultation with the members of each committee to which the priority pertained and also the strategic management committee. All the strategic management committee members then gave the priority scores for each initiative of the priority. And then we analyzed that through a statistical tool and came out with a priority matrix for each priority. Once this was done, we had the objectives to be covered over the next five to 10 years priority wise with the priority matrix. We then fixed timelines and also accountability. So this was in a nutshell, how we have moved forward with the strategic plan. To brief you about the seven priorities that were finalized for implementation of the vision, mission, objectives, and goals of ISCOS, which were also reviewed by the Strategic Management Committee after the SWOT analysis was done. So the seven priorities to fulfill this vision, mission, and goals were streamlining activities, organizational structure, governance, including financial management and leadership. That was the first priority. The second was scientific activities, including journals. The third was research. Fourth was education, training, and capacity building. The fifth was partnering and collaboration. The sixth, communication. And the seventh, advocacy. So these were the priorities for which the various initiatives were fixed. Now, how do we move forward in this regard with the implementation of the strategic plan in a structured manner? So, the first thing would be to also look into the finances which would be required for the implementation of the strategic plan. And hence, working on a business plan for his cost was the first step forward. So once that was done, each year you need to have an operational plan for his cost in which you would shortlist the priorities and the initiatives which would be worked upon by the respective accountable committees and officials during that particular year. And the budget allocated accordingly, the roles and responsibilities fixed accordingly, and accountability fixed accordingly. Then would be the phase to implement the plan each year. And uh, monitor it as well, monitor not only the performance, but also the progress of the implementation of the strategic plan. And as you monitor and review it, 
take corrective action and modify the strategic plan as required. So this, in a nutshell, was the strategic plan and also how we intend to move forward in the implementation. But we want to mention here also that the priority of partnering and collaboration, and that is what we are doing today, partnering with WellSpect for this webinar and deliberating on how to move forward. And in fact, ISCOS realizes that it is a big dream to implement the strategic plan and it can't do it by itself. It has to liaise with various organizations like WHO, other organizations, other professional societies. And as you also mentioned, Ruth, also liaise with the consumer group. As they say, nothing for us without us. So we can't have a plan without involving the consumers right in the planning process and then in the implementation process. So I think under your leadership, Ruth, we will take big steps forward in the implementation of this strategic plan and realization of the goals, mission, and vision of ISCOS. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Havinder. And that's uh, um, really, I think, outlines how we hope to be moving forward, that we really recognize the importance of partnerships within our own work, work with our consumers and their families and with a range of organizations, such as the WHO, and such as the private sector, like WellSpect, who partner with us and collaborate on so much of what we do, not just WellSpect, but many organizations in the private sector, but also so many important organizations across the world. So Jana Maria, I'm really interested to hear more from you about your ideas about ongoing partnership and collaboration. Because as pointed out by Dr. Chabra and by me, working with external organizations, societies, industry and funders is crucial if we are to move forward and implement our strategic plan over the coming years. The partnership and other relationships that ISCOS has been able to develop with the WellSpect is an excellent example of how partnerships can translate into practical action and help to increase, to increase access to up-to-date spinal cord injury information and education everywhere. So I would be really keen for you to tell us a bit more about WellSpect and the WellSpect partnership program around the world and why you have chosen to work in partnership with ISCOS. Because we know that WellSpec partnered with us to uh, support the organization 
of that first ISCOS regional symposium in Latin America, which was such a great success. So over to you both. I'm really keen for our listeners to have a better idea about WellSpect and WellSpect partnerships. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Marshall. And I think we have to take that question in two parts. So let me start by, mm -hmm. by, by just agreeing with both Dr. Sharras and Marshall saying collaborations uh, are key uh, for any business or for any uh, co collaborations or uh, confederation you have. Uh, so in order for us as a company to continue being innovative and making a real difference, which is not only our slogan, but also something that our creed or something that we really believe in, uh, we do need collaborations. And on that note, we do have several. Uh, we do span from pure sponsorships uh, to clinical research to basic science. Uh, when it comes to sponsorship, we do obviously work with you, which we're very grateful for the opportunity to be working with ISCOS. Apart from that, we also work with the International Basketball Federation. Uh, sorry, International Wheelchair Basketball Federation as a sponsorship uh, on, on a um, organizational level, but we also sponsor individuals such as we have a, a para rider in UK called EV Tombs. Um, that's probably familiar to many of you that we sponsor. When it comes to basic science, uh, we do have both the responsibility to uh, help out uh, when it comes to supporting science, but also obviously uh, in our endeavor to uh, make better products. So on that note, we do have a collaboration with, for instance, the Institute, uh, the Chalmers Institute of Technology working with graphene. And you might remember that graphene is monolayers of uh, carbon atoms that appears to have a uh, anti-bacteriological effect. So we are hoping in the future that this could be applied for, to, for instance, our urinary catheters uh, to avoid attracting urinary tract infections if we could get to that. When it comes to, to uh, clinical research, uh, on the product development side, we do always do clinical trials and investigations to ensure the uh, efficacy and the safety of our, of our products. Uh, but we also sponsor uh, studies, uh, investigator initiated studies in different parts of the world. Just to mention a few examples, uh, we do uh, sponsor a study in Nepal uh, working with bladder management um, practices in that region for spinal cord injuries. Uh, and, and in the other end of the spectrum is that we do work in, in studies in Italy with uh, uh, adolescents and uh, how to handle their blood and bowel management. So we have the entire spectra of collaborations ongoing. Um, so when it comes to the specific with ISCOS, maybe you could take that on, Mia. Yes, uh, thank you, Jan, and, and, and thank you for inviting us to to celebrate your 60th anniversary. Yeah. It really is a milestone, um, I must I must say, and, and congratulations that uh, you have uh, you have stayed in business for so long. Not many organizations do, so yeah. you mm. must be doing something right, and and uh, and that is what we see. I mean, ISCOS really is a highly reputable organization. And we work with you for, for many years. So when this opportunity arises to partner with you and, and work more alongside you, we, we really wanted to engage with you to do that, to see what, what we can develop out of that partnership. Um, and, and one of the main reasons we do want a partnership with you is we have a shared vision of, of looking at how we can promote the highest standard of care for spinal cord injury across the whole globe and not just in the in the fortunate few countries where we all live. Um, and um, we also understand uh, from recent studies in the UK, I think, that one of the main concerns for spinal cord patients is the lack of understanding of bladder and bowel issues in spinal cord injury, uh, in the spinal cord injury population. So this is where our roads really come together and, and the main reason we, we wanted to partnership with you. Um, 
but we also, we also want to be innovative in this area to see how can we really um, bring this knowledge out into the world. So um, thank you for the partnership there, Iskos. Um, I want to say what, um, I give a quote from what uh, Dr. Frederico Montero Meja, uh, our SLAP, Latin American uh, representative who was instrumental in uh, developing and running the symposium last year um, about the importance of partnerships. He said, this symposium, I can't do the accent, so I'll just do it like this. Uh, this symposium represents an authentic, authentic and clear example of the relevance and the easiness of the international collaboration. We are confident that the common objectives will be reached. And at the end of this symposium, we will be enriched with greater motivation and strength to guarantee better health and quality of life for people with spinal cord injury in our region. Mm -hmm. Wellspect was very involved in supporting that event. How did you feel about the meeting of the key outcomes that were that were outlined um, about guaranteeing better health and quality of life? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, we think the whole initiative of these regional symposiums that, that you have initiated, that you call ISCOS on the road, is really exciting. Um, and, uh, and we appreciated uh, the opportunity to be part of the organization committee of that, of that event. And uh, it will be even more interesting, I think, uh, now when when you are planning the second uh, regional symposium in in the uh, in another part of the world where we will see a a, a, a mix of a virtual and a physical meeting i think that really is the future and as you said Ruth earlier um the way people can uh, um, get access to research to education and, and, and be participants at such an event without having to travel really is the future. And we yeah. want to be part of that, of that journey. So um, we, we look forward to continue supporting you on that uh, journey. Mm. We look forward to having you there. <laughs> I think uh, you've said it really well. And I think it is an exciting journey and having industry support as well as local support and um, WHO support, all the different groups involved um, is, is very exciting. Mm -hmm. And 60 years ago, nobody would have expected us to be able to do any of this. Mm -hmm. 60 years ago, we had one telephone on your desk if you were lucky. <laughs> Yeah. 30 years ago, mm. if you went to, the nor to North America, very few places had a fax. Mm. No one had heard of the internet. Mm -hmm. Now, you go to places where there is incredible poverty and the children may not have shoes, but they have mobile phones. Mm that have much more power than the original enormous computers. Mm -hmm. And so we are able to utilize those technologies that nobody ever dreamed of except in um, sci-fi movies mm -hmm. to, um, to utilize our priorities mm. our strategic plan of edu basically providing education and inclusion mm. so i look forward 
we look forward, ESCOS looks forward to the next five years. And I hope that we in ISCOS and you in Wellspect can continue to build on our partnership to ensure that people who are living with spinal cord injuries in all parts of the world have access to the services they need hmm. and the people looking after them have the education they need to provide those services. I wonder whether Dr. Chabra has anything to add before we finish this webinar. No, I think uh, Ruth, uh, this is a wonderful example of a partnership. And I think uh, when I was going through the well-spec uh, goals and objectives, so we have a lot in common, like education, science, research, and improving the lives of persons with spinal cord injury. I think we have been deliberating in ISCOS also that when we have our annual scientific meetings, those are in regions where there is good logistical support and this would be mainly in a few places across the globe. But how do we reach out to places where this does not, normally this does not filter out to, and people from there can't join the annual scientific meetings because of the expenses involved. So I think this ISCOS regional symposiums in collaboration with Wellspec is a wonderful initiative where we can reach out to these areas and help disseminate knowledge and information Absolutely. and promote science and research. I think this is a, a wonderful way of partnering such that our strategic objectives get uh, are met. I think there can be hordes of other ways that we can collaborate since we have common mission, vision and goals. Mm -hmm. uh, I would look forward to a long-term partnership. Yes, and I do too, because it really, the strategic plan for the next five years and 10 years for ISCOS is something that the ISCOS community really believes in. And it is so clear to all of us that we can do so much more when we work in collaboration and partnership with other organizations such as WellSpec. And we in ISCOS are truly grateful for the way in which WellSpec really supports our work. I think we can leave our podcast and webinar here, but it is always possible to listen again and to look at how our educational podcast, look at our educational podcasts, which are available from last year and the year before, if you need to catch up. As well, you can send questions to the administration of ISCOS, that's admin at iscos.org.org.uk if you have any questions about this session and the questions will be forwarded to the people who can best answer them. Thank you all for your attention.